The idea of start off with something low risk, just float it out there and have people react to it and maybe have them ask you for what you had in mind to give to them. I think that's a, that's a really uh, excellent approach. So the next one is from Scotland. Oh, unfortunately, uh, Robert uh, couldn't make it um, over here, uh, maybe at some future date. This is the Scottish Social Services Council um, and uh, quite an innovative approach. Um, they have about 200,000 people in the sector, a lot of them back into the sector, and then want to be able to skill up once they're in the sector with social services, home care, etc. So I think you'll find this very interesting. I'd love to be sitting where you are today, at the start of a journey that has the potential to completely change the way your organisation thinks about learning and development. Five years ago, the Scottish Social Services Council was where you are now. We're the regulatory body for people who work in social services in Scotland, and as well as requiring registrants to gain formal qualifications, we also require a dedication to continuous learning. We wanted to reward people for learning in a highly visible way. Digital badges were just what we were looking for. Although initially skeptical about badges, we found that they could be much more than just a short-term motivator. Instead, they fill a gap between learning and practice and they help ignite positive learning cultures within organisations while at the same time producing better informed and more capable learners. 6,500 badges have been awarded to learners through the SSSC Open Badges platform. That might not sound like a lot, but each of those badges required a written account of between 100 to 300 words. Each account is assessed by a real person and the badge only awarded if it met the criteria. Think about what is more important, the badge or the evidence that the learner has produced. Over time, people collecting our badges gain a portfolio of evidence that becomes more valuable to them and to the SSSC than a portfolio of attendance badges or quiz pass badges or automatically awarded badges from a learning experience platform. For those 6,500 6, badges, learners submitted more than 1.5 million words talking about how their learning is changing their practice. Challenge yourself to think of your Open Badges program not as a technology program, but uh, something that's dedicated towards helping learners collect and produce the best evidence they can of their continuous learning. Think about it as 10% technology and 90% what we do as L&D professionals already, which is capture evidence of learning transfer and the impact this has on practice. Now, if I asked my learners to um, complete an e-portfolio, only a small minority would be motivated to do this. But as soon as you add digital badges into the mix, suddenly people are more motivated, they're inspired, and they're even happy to bring their co-workers and their peers along for the ride. The SSSC started um, by using badges to capture the stages within the COLB learning cycle. We used bronze, silver, and gold badges, with bronze badges typical attendance awards silver for learners who could show that they understood and they planned and shared their learning and gold badges awarded to learners who demonstrated the actual application of the learning in the real world. Going forward, the SSSC is likely to adopt a more rigorous approach to evaluate and learn and transfer, but learning cycles are a good place to start. My advice to you is to use your digital badges to help your learners produce and collect excellent evidence. Slow them down and get them to think. Encourage them to have discussions in the real world with their peers or their managers and co-workers. This can help them understand and contextualise what they've learned. Provide tutorials and badges just about creating evidence for badges. You think about it, if someone comes to university or college for the first time, we normally offer some form of study skill support. And this is still absolutely essential when it comes to the world of badges. At the SSSC, we assess submissions for our badges. That's intensive, but it's necessary. Learners won't thank us if after several years of collecting badges, they realise that all their evidence is poor or non-existent. Those badges will have little value in the long term. So think about how evidence can be assessed for your badges. It doesn't need to be assessed by you. It can be by peers, supervisors or tutors but it's um, vital that somewhere along the line, the evidence the learner submits does get assessed. 
Badges can be necessary to get learners motivated to start recording their learning in the here and now, but it's the evidence they'll thank you for, not the badge in the long term. If I can give you one last piece of advice, don't ever give up. Your first experiments with badges are unlikely to return the results you want. At SSSC, it took us four years to get the results we wanted. Perseverance does pay off. Now, Don has asked me to end this with a challenge, and I'm going to leave you with the very same challenge that the SSSC set for me five years ago. And that is, how can we use open badges to turn passive consumers of content into self-motivated and capable learners in a world where self-directed to continuous learning is more essential than ever. Now, that's a tough challenge. And it's one that we face wherever we are in the world, whether that's in Scotland or Canada. And only learning and development professionals like you hold a solution to that challenge. You're in the right place and at the right time. And this is an incredibly exciting time to be part of this profession.